Hey guys, Shotgun Shogun here, and it's time for the big reveal. The name of Sickle Man is Carl Addington. Now let me tell you why. In earlier days, this was the Addington's hunting cabin. On their last trip, Carl Addington took a trip to town to get supplies. The closest town was Point Pleasant, home of the Mothman cult. After picking up supplies from the convenience store next door, Carl Addington decided to stop into the Mothman Museum before heading back to the cabin. This is where Carl Addington inevitably joined the Mothman cult and discovered his love of killing. This is where he learned to decapitate and disseminate bodies. Fast forward to just before the bombs drop, the Addingtons have been hunting at the Black Bear Cabin, and Carl's been doing some hunting of his own at the Old Cabin. Problem is, now people are noticing others are going missing. Carl needed to come up with a plan, or else risk getting caught and exposing the whole cult. And that's where the evidence left behind comes into play. It wasn't a coincidence that all of this led back to Wesley. So as you may or may not know, in the basement of the first cabin you find four bodies missing their heads. On the deck there's a hot tub with five heads in it. Five heads to four bodies, where'd the fifth head come from? By the front door you find this scene here. At this point we go to the Black Bear Lodge, down to the basement. In the basement, we find this hollow tape, the contents of which I will be playing for you now. Well, another hunting season comes to a close. I guess we should start packing up the lodge. Yes, I suppose we should. What's the problem? This was a great season. I know. It's just, well, it's getting quite boring. We hunt the same thing. Oh my god! Then what do you want? If you have something to say, then spit it out already! Alright. Before you judge, hear me out. What if we hunted something new? Something that was a real challenge for a change. Something that could fight back. We circulate an advertisement offering a free weekend at the lodge. People will have no idea what they're really getting into. Perfect. Wait, are you talking about hunting humans? Ah, oh, don't act so surprised. You know it makes sense. I can see it on your face. Uh, well, do you really think we can get away with it? With our wealth, dear brother, we can get away with anything. At this point, it's looking pretty clear that Wesley is, in fact, Sickle Man. However, that's what Carl wants you to think. If you listen to the tape carefully, you can clearly tell that he's leading Wesley and into saying these things. On top of that, what other reason would there be for these tapes to exist? Carl knew Wesley was getting bored with hunting animals, as he did. He knew he would want to be a murderer. He used that knowledge to trap his brother by getting him on holotape, planning murder. By this point, I started investigating the basement further and I came across this room, where they've obviously been dissecting people. But that's not Sickle Man's M.O. Sickle Man was more ritualistic than scientific. Upon further investigation, we find Wesley Addington's office, with multiple bones and skulls on the desk, one of which has been capped. At this point, I know the evidence is stacking up against Wesley, but bear with me because we have one more scene to go look at, and this is the house on the hill. In order to find this one, I did have to take to Google. Inside this house, there's a woman dead in the chair with a scythe. I believe this, this scene to be staged. If you notice... There's the chair and the birdcage from the first Sickle Man scene. It's meant to tie it in, hold the central theme. Next to this woman are two skulls. 
both of which have had their caps removed, kind of like the one on the desk at Wesley Addington's office. If we investigate further into this scene, we find that on the floor next to her are two bodies, one with a head, one without. Upon further investigation, you'll find that there are two fuel tanks in this house, one by the wood stove and one in the bathroom. This is not safe and in my opinion was done intentionally, and I'm about to tell you why. See, the pressure was on for Carl Addington. People were going missing and others were becoming aware of that fact. So in order to cover it up, he coaxed his brother into admitting that he wanted to commit a series of murders. He recorded this and planted it in the house. He then committed murder of the woman in the blue dress planted her in the blue house with the explosives, the bird cage, and the two skulls from Wesley's basement. The cops showed up, he killed them both, took one of their skulls and planted it at the sickle man murder scenes in order to link those two scenes together. He, as a fail safe, the skulls were there should the explosives not go off because the original plan was for this woman to cop the blame and this to be taken as a suicide because she had been found out. But had that not happened, when Wesley finally got caught, which he would have, being he was advertising this in the paper, the skulls would have been found in the basement. They would have been recognized as the same as from as the ones from the blue house and the hollow tape would have cemented the evidence against him thus pinning the entire thing on wesley addington all in all though be it very convoluted this plan would have worked had carl addington tried a little harder to make it not look so staged from my perspective it looks incredibly fake and like somebody was trying to spin a narrative that just wasn't going to fit the scenes they created. Anyways, if you have another theory or think I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this, follow for more.